TV KPM. Assalamualaikum adik-adik yang sedang menonton sekarang ini. Ya, ini dia Road to Success STPM 2020 bersama saya Eli Arifin. Ha, macam biasalah kita nak bagi tahu kepada adik untuk Road to Success ini kita akan memberi tips ataupun macam mana cara nak menjawab kertas peperiksaan STPM 2020. Hari ini subjek yang kita akan pelajari dan dalami adalah chemistry untuk tingkatan 6. Jadi kita tak nak buang masa, kita nak berkenalan dengan cikgu yang akan mengajar kita hari ini. Jom kita saksikan profil guru dulu. Itu dia cikgu yang sangat cantik hari ini yang mengajar di PTE Sekolah Menengah Kebangsaan Seri Sentosa, Cikgu Irni. Apa khabar Cikgu? Khabar baik Eli. Ah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah sihat nampak Cikgu cantik eh, matching-matching kan kalau mas dengan tudung tu. Itulah. Ini memang dipilih. Ah, memang ada chemistry yes, sangat. Yes, chemistry <laughs> sangat ni. Okey Cikgu, mungkin Cikgu boleh kongsikan sedikit uh, mengenai diri Cikgu kepada murid-murid yang sedang menonton terutamanya sekarang ini. Hai semua yang sedang menonton di rumah dan juga di mana-mana saja anda berada saya Cik Guning or Teacher Ningko okey uh, cikgu akan mengajar chemistry cikgu akan sharing chemistry today okey dan cikgu dah mengajar selama 16 tahun and hopefully hari ini cikgu dapat share uh, ilmu sebelum you all masuk ke medan perang iaitu peperiksaan semester tiga. Wow, itu yang medan perang paling takut. <laughs> Saya kalau dengar cikgu sekolah cakap awak dah bersedia untuk berjuang di medan perang, <laughs> kita tak ada lah. Mestilah bayangkan ada senjata semua kan? Tak ada senjata. Kita hanyalah pen dan yes. pencil Pens. sahaja. Dan ya. pencil. Tapi untuk chemistry ini selalunya ada masalah dari segi Uh, menjawab soalan ni bahagian mana murid-murid selalu hadapi? Uh, biasanya problem murid-murid uh, adalah di section C untuk section paper C. 3 ni. Yes. Okay. Section, C. section C. Dan bahagian 3 ni lah kita akan kupaskan dengan lebih lanjut. Tapi sebelum tu cikgu kita ke meja sakti kita. Jom. Boleh. Boleh. Tak ada masalah. <laughs> Okey. Yang pastinya kita nak pesan kepada adik-adik untuk menjaga penjarakan sosial. Oops. <laughs> Satu, meter. Satu meter. Dan jangan lupa sanitasi tangan dan kerak cuci tangan serta memakai pelitup muka setiap kali keluar dari rumah. Okey. Betul Saya sangat Ali. Sanitasi dulu. Boleh. Lepas tu turn cikgu. Boleh? Boleh. Boleh. Silakan cikgu. Okey dan uh, sekejap lagi kita akan belajar tentang apa cikgu highlights dia. Uh, highlights dia adalah berkenaan dengan macam mana calon nak menjawab paper 3 okay. untuk chemistry. Okey. Dan kita akan tengok uh, macam mana cara-cara untuk belajar untuk mendapatkan markah yang maksimum. Kalau boleh tak ada salah pun. Wow, wow. itu a dream come true. Cikgu boleh buka mas cikgu. Boleh. Alright, boleh terima kasih. Dan kita nak rehat sekejap boleh? Cikgu? Boleh, boleh. Ah, cikgu ada sesuatu ke nak kongsikan kita sebelum kita berehat ni? Okey, uh, sebelum kita berehat. Okey. Uh, Eli cikgu nak share ada satu tips yang sangat penting. Hmm. Uh, cikgu rasa this is the most important tip. Okey. Iaitu kita tunggu selepas rehat oh, ini. Oh, cikgu suka bagi kejutan ah. <laughs> kita rehat sebentar kembali selepas ini. Didik TV KPM Kembali di Didik TV ya ini dia Road to Success STPM 2020 kita akan belajar ataupun memahami bagaimana nak menjawab kertas soalan chemistry ah untuk STPM ataupun tingkatan 6 tahun 2020 ini bersama kita cikgu yang cantik ini cikgu Ning tadi saya ingat ni by Zura rupanya cikgu Irni yang akan memberi orang kata tips ataupun rahsia yang disimpan selama ini kepada murid-murid yang akan menghadapi ataupun calon-calon STPM 2020. Dan bukan saja kita berdua saja cikgu, kita ada murid-murid cikgu juga di dalam talian. Okey. Betul. Betul. Mungkin cikgu boleh kenalkan murid-murid cikgu ataupun calon-calon STPM 2020 dalam talian sekarang ini. Kacak-kacak, lawa-lawa semua ini. 
uh, memandangkan uh, mereka ni adalah pelajar pra universiti. Okay. Jadi cikgu menjemput pelajar-pelajar ini memperkenalkan diri masing-masing. Ah. Dia orang kena menonjolkan bakat dia orang kan sebab dah form 6 ni. Ah. Jadi kita suruh dia orang perkenalkan diri sendiri. Suruh seorang lah. Eh? Ya, okay. Cikgu pilih dulu siapa yang akan mulakan. Uh, kita akan mulakan daripada atas hujung sekali. Atas hujung sekali Gideon. Yes, Betul Gideon. Betul sebutan nama dia Gideon. Gideon. Ah. Uh, hello, selamat sejahtera. Nama saya Gideon Soyong Le. Uh, saya dari uh, Pusat Tingkatan 6 SMK Seri Sentosa. Okey, yang sebelah. Terima kasih, Gideon. Sebelah adalah Jia Rong Ti. Ya, yeah. hi. Nama saya Ti Jia Rong dan saya juga dari ada Pusat Tingkatan 6 SMK Seri Sentosa. Saya suka background dia. Ada hijau-hijau ikan-ikan itu. Terima kasih. Jia Rong Ti yang seterusnya kita ada di sebelahnya. Sekejap kita nampak skrin kita. Ah, Kita ada Muhammad Muhammad Samir. Uh, ah, ah. Okey. Hai, Assalamualaikum. Selamat sejahtera. Uh, nama saya Muhammad Samir. Uh, saya dari Kolej Tingkatan 6 Pudu Jaya. Yeah. Oh, itu je. <laughs> itu je. Okey, seterusnya. Okey, hai. Okey, sekarang kita ada Ivan Ivan Yong. Yes, Yong Ma. Yes, Ivan Yong. Introduce yourself. Aha. Oh, mic dia tak ada. Salam sejahtera. Ah. Salam sejahtera semua. Uh, saya Yong Junman dari sekolah SMK. Hello. Yes, saya Hello. dengar saya. Salam yes. sejahtera. Salah sejarah saya, saya Yong Juman dari sekolah SMK Sri Sentosa. Okey. Okay. Terima kasih Ivan Yong. Biasalah kadang-kadang dalam talian ni masalah kan? teknikal ah, sering betul. berlaku kan. Uh, Shaina Yong Yang. Selamat Shit. sejahtera. Okay. Nama saya Shaina Yong Yang. Saya dari SMK Sri Sentosa. Okey. Yang terakhir sekali kita nak berkenalan dengan Gong Goh Yung Lok. Yes. Ha, ni Goh macam pemain game ni kerusi dia pun tak tahu dah. Ha, kerusi pun hebat tu Yung Lok. <laughs> Okey, Yung Lok, please. Silakan. Okey, salam sejahtera kepada semua. Nama saya Gong Lok. Saya pun dari Pusat Tingkatan 6 SMK Sri Sentosa. Okey. Okay. Ini semua uh, terima kasih Gong Yung Lok. Ini semua pelajar-pelajar yang paling pandai je, Gong. Uh, ni kita Uh, mix lah semua. Ah, Campur-campur lah. Ah, ya, Campur-campur lah semua. Baiklah. Okay. Saya serahkan kepada cikgu untuk mengajar. Thank you, Ellie. Terima Terima kasih, Ellie. Terima kasih, Ellie. Di atas uh, introduction itu tadi. Hi, everyone. Online. Okay. <laughs> Jadi, without further ado, let us continue with my sharing today. Okay. This is myself. <laughs> okay, we will start with examination format. Of course, before you go into anything, you need to know what is the format. For chemistry paper three, we have three sections. Section A, which comprises of 15 objective questions, which will give you 50 marks, meaning that one question, one mark. And then we have section B. Section B comprises of two structured questions where you have to answer both. And these two questions will give you also 15 marks. And last section, we have section C. There are three essay questions and you have to answer only two. If you answer more than two, only the first two answers will be marked by the examiner. And the total mark for the two essay is 30. And overall marks will give you 60 marks. And these three sections you have to answer in one hour and 30 minutes only. Let us take a look how you are going to manage your time to answer all these questions in 90 minutes. So for 15 objective questions, please answer in 15 minutes, meaning that one objective you have to answer in only one minute. And then for the two structured questions, you have to answer also in 15 minutes. And last, the essay questions, the two essay you have to answer in 15 minutes, meaning that for each essay you have to answer in 25 minutes. So the total mark, the total times you are going to use to answer is 80 minutes. What are you going to do with the 10 minutes balance? You are going to do rechecking. Why there is only 10 minutes? Um, 
Can I ask my student online here? Boleh. Uh, Jiarong, why do you think there uh, is only 10 minutes for you to recheck? Um, so that the students won't be hesitate that whether their answer is correct or wrong. Like yeah. they just check whether they answer and then just pass. Yeah. Yes, very good, Jiarong. Okay, that is the correct answer. So here, candidates at home, as much as possible, please recheck your answer in only 10 minutes or even if you can get more less than 10 minutes that is even better because we want to avoid you from being unsure of your own answer and then when you are unsure of your answer you might change from the correct answer into the wrong one okay this is on the analysis item for the past five years as you can see here for chemistry paper 3, there are eight topics and all are on organic chemistry. The first five topics here, as you can see, the weightage for the uh, topics here are on the hydrocarbons, haloalkanes and hydroxy compound. Now, if you look at the last three topics, the weightage is more on here, okay? The two last topic so here what can you do about this this is not soalan ramalan yeah candidates this is not soalan ramalan so maybe you might give more attention to all these topics from my analysis these are the types of questions that they can ask you in the structure and essay part so as you can see here, for structured question, normally they require you to answer in a short and precise manner. Whereas in essay questions, you have to give maybe longer answer. So as you can see here, like I said, it is very precise. For example, name a compound by IUPAC, draw the structural formula, state the reagent, condition and observation. Complete the equation. Next, you have state the reagents and condition for synthesis. And last, they can ask you to state and explain physical properties. And this requires only short and precise answer, like I said. And next, we have essay question. For essay question, as you can see here, draw or explain isomers. And then deduce structural formula. Suggest or explain, they can ask you to. Or write the chemical equation. Next, they can ask you to write and explain reaction scheme. Last but not least, they can ask you to write reaction mechanism. So you can see the comparison here, how the question are like. So we move on to the next slide. This is the real exam question from 2013, repeat. So this is structured question. As you can see here, candidates, please make sure when you read the question, underline the important points, the important thing they want you to answer. So as you can see here, you have to suggest a reagent to differentiate the two compounds. And you also are required to state the observation. So when you come across this type of question, candidate, please, you have to come up with a simple test. Simple test means you don't have to give out, you don't have to prepare uh, whatever, uh, apparatus, let's say, for example, to produce a gas, and then you have to deliver into your test tube. No need. This one, simple test means you just take the reagent and put inside the test tube, voila you get the answer. So here, candidate, as you can see, the compound given are phenol base and carboxylic acid base, benzoic acid base. So as you can see, when you answer this type of questions, make sure you choose reagent that will give two different observations, not one same observation. Once you give same observation, straight away, zero mark for your observation. So, as you can see here, I put here, I put positive and negative, meaning that you need two different observations. So, as you can see, there are two reagents that you can use for the 
testing to differentiate. However, please only use one because there is only one mark for reagent. We don't want both, okay? So you choose either one. For ferrum 3 chloride aqueous, the observation will be one give purple coloration, not purple solution, yeah? Remember, for ferrum 3 chloride, it's coloration. Purple coloration. Next, for benzoic acid, you will have giving orange brown precipitate. So, that is two different observations. If you use bromine water, you will have white precipitate and another one, no observable change. I know many of you candidates out there will answer like this when it comes to this type of answer. Candidate will answer, no reaction. When you answer no reaction, that is wrong because no reaction is not an observation. So you need to write no observable change or no changes, either one. So please remember, positive and negative means two different observation, not one same observation. Now we move on. Okay, this is another question from 2017. You are required to draw the structural formula of optically active isomer. That is hint, underline, like what I did. And then this one gives fruity smell. That is another of your hints there. So now they also ask you to write the IUPAC name. So here you have two things that you need to do. Now, how are you going to answer? As a form, as a semester three candidates, all of you know, when we talk about fruity smell, there is only one homologous series that will produce fruity smell, which is ester. So as you can see here, ester has the same general formula as the carboxylic acid. So that's why ester is also an isomer for the carboxylic acid. And when you draw the formula, the structural formula for this ester, you have to make sure you form it into an into a structure with chiral carbon. So that's why, as you can see, you have an asterisk there to show it is chiral carbon. So this correct structure, you have one mark, and then naming, don't forget, you have another one here, so you will get another one mark. But please, candidate, remember to name ester the alkyl from the alcohol part and the alkanoate from your carboxylic acid part has to be spaced in between. If you write like this, wrong. Okay, moving on. Ah, yes, we have another one. This is from the previous slide. Another question is, they can ask you, which isomer has higher boiling point? So candidate, remember, when they ask you about boiling point, this is on physical properties. So physical properties, when they ask about boiling point, you have to remember, you need to talk about the intermolecular forces. You have to answer in terms of intermolecular forces, not bonding, not structure. If you talk about the bonding, straight away wrong. So remember, boiling point is intermolecular forces. So which one having the higher boiling point? Of course, you have to answer 2,2-dimethylbutanoic acid. Why? Because the formation of hydrogen bonding between the molecules. We move on. Now, we are coming into the part of assay. Candidates, before I continue here, did you remember that I said I want to share with you one very important uh, tips, Ellie. Ingat tak? Mm. I ada nak share kan? Very ah. one very important betul, tips. Betul. Ah, okay. Before I go further into my sharing session, this one tip is very important, candidate. Please remember this. This very important tip you have to answer according to the requirement of the question, not according to what you feel like. 
what you want to answer. No, no, no. This is the most important thing. So, given that you have to follow the requirement of the question, we look at this part. Essay question. Essay question will give you the most mark. One question, 15, uh, 15 marks allocated. So, let us look at an example from 2015. This question is given glucose reducing agent. The question asks to state the observation and write the equation to show the reaction with tolerance reagent. So now, candidates, I want to highlight on tolerance reagent. Please make sure you write the correct spelling for tolerance. If you answer, you write the spelling as T O L L E N F S T R O P H E S. That is wrong already. So please be careful, okay? Especially when you have to come up with the chemical test. Okay, now to answer this question, the marks allocated are three. How are we going to get the three marks? The question only two. One is equation, write the equation, and another one is to state the observation. How can we get the three mark? So, candidate, here is the sample answer. Make sure you write the reactants and the products of your chemical equation correctly. So, when here you draw the structure of glucose complete with all the carbons, hydrogens, oxygen, the double bonds and the single bonds are there, that is correct already. And then from here, from the glucose, transform or undergo transformation into the alkanoid ion here. As you can see, I focus on the transformation. As you can see, you have alkanoid ion here. So, and all this structure correct with all the carbons, hydrogen again, everything is there. You will get one mark for the correct reaction or the transformation from glucose to this alkanoid ion. You will get one mark. And then the, what we call the transformation from your Tolerance reagent, this is the chemical formula for the tolerance reagent. Into argentum ion here, you will get another one mark. So on your equation, you have two marks. And the last mark is allocated for the correct observation, which is a silver mirror is formed. Okay, next. Wow. I know candidates, when you see this type of question, you are already sweating. Eli, <laughs> dah masuk ni ke medan perang ni kan? Lepas tu tengok pula banyak-banyak macam ni. Itu paling seram lah tu. Yes, paling seram. What to do? Don't panic, candidate. Whatever you do, always plan. When you look at this type of question, there are a lot of words there. Okay, there are a lot of words. So what are you going to do? You are going to plan your answer. So you read, you analyze quickly, and then you come up with the planning. Here, as we all know from all these words, you take up 2-methylpropane plus or react with HCl to produce P. Another reaction is P react with water to form Q. And last reaction, P plus NaO in the presence of sodium hydroxide in the presence of ethanol to produce up. You have three reactions. So now, from this, you take out what do they want? Structure of P, Q and R. Chemical equations. Type of reaction. Why P is the only product? The functional group of Q. And last but not least, the mechanism of Q. So you are going to answer all this. Let us look the sample answer. How are we going to answer this type of question? Candidate, this is one tip I want to tell you. When you are required to answer this type of question, there are chemical equations, right? You have to write here. So what are you going to do is, in order for you to save time, now you just write the correct equations. Eli, ada ni kat sini tips dia, mm -hmm. trick dia, nak jimat masa. Okay. So, you just write the chemical equation required from the question. You just write. 
But now, the first one just now, they ask you to write the structures of PQR. Now you want to save time. What you want, you what you're gonna do is once you write the three chemical equations correctly, don't forget you label P, Q, and R. So here, from the three correct chemical equations, you get three marks, and then for the correct structures of P, Q, and R, you get another three marks. So save time. Mungkin dua minit ataupun satu minit kat sini. Save time. Ah yes, and then we move on. The questions, there is still the question. Ah, we do not finish yet. Type of reactions. So type of reactions, candidate. I know some of you always confuse between type of reaction and name of reaction. Later on, I will show you how, why. Okay, so here the first equation is electrophilic addition. Many candidates always forgot to write the electrophilic. Remember, for addition, you need to add one more word before the addition, either nucleophilic or electrophilic. But since this is using electrophilic, so you have to write electrophilic addition. If you only write addition, wrong. Okay, so you lose mark already there. So next one, the type of reaction is nucleophilic substitution. Same thing here, substitution, you have electrophilic or nucleophilic. So again, do not forget to write the nucleophilic substitution. You get one mark. Ah, so Ali, kat sini yang cikgu kata, many candidates dia confused mm -mm. between type of reaction and the name of reaction. So here, if candidate answer hydration reaction, wrong. Because that is nama, nama reaction. So nama reaction memang salah. It is not type of reaction. And last but not least is this reaction. It is known as elimination reaction. Okay, cikgu. Ya. Yeah. Kita ada sambungan lagi lepas ni? Ada, ada. Ah, tapi kita nak bagi uh, cara-cara STPM di dalam talian juga di rumah untuk ambil nafas kejap. Okay. Sebab rasa macam penuh sangat ke dalam otak ni. Oh, betul, betul, betul. Cikgu pun rasa macam tu okay. juga. <laughs> Jadi kita nak rehat sekejap, cikgu boleh? Boleh, boleh. Atau cikgu boleh. ada pesanan kepada cara-cara STPM? Um, jangan lupa kita sambung balik sekejap lagi. ya. Cikgu ada banyak lagi tips yang cikgu nak kongsi. Okey. Didik TV KPM Kembali di Roto Sukses STPM 2020 bersama saya Eli Arifin. Hari ini kita akan belajar macam mana nak menjawab kertas peperiksaan chemistry untuk calon-calon STPM 2020. Dan bersama Eli, uh, bukan sahaja uh, kita ada cikgu cantik, cikgu Irni, juga kita ada calon-calon STPM yang uh, merupakan daripada PTE SMK Seri Sentosa serta Uh, KTE Pudu Jaya Kuala Lumpur. Jadi saya serahkan kepada cikgu untuk sambung mengajar subjek chemistry. Thank you Eli. Welcome. Okey, um candidate semua, okey dan my online student, mesti you ought to tanya, -tanya kenapa lah uh, cikgu ni duk terang pasal AC, pasal structure. Betul kan? Ah uh, okey. Candidates you all need to know, okey, for structured and essay question, these are where the marks mostly come from. Uh, but don't worry, okay, don't worry. Before the end of our session today, I will share with you the tips to answer section A, which is the objective questions. Okay, so now let us continue. Before I continue, like Ellie said, takut budak ni dah banyak sangat kan? Ha, uh, budak. Yeah, um, everyone, my online student, are you okay? You lock? <laughs> Shayna, the only girl. On masih, the team. Masih okay, berada ya? di dunia sebenar ke? Ya, yeah, masih berada di dunia sebenar. Eh. Jangan tiba-tiba dah ada yang... Okay, uh, so be, be aware eh, sebab nanti cikgu akan tanya soalan. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, uh, so kita continue, Ali. Okay, boleh Alright. cikgu. Silakan. Okay, candidates, uh, jangan jangan ke mana-mana. Kita ada lagi, eh. don't worry. Okay, next. Uh, this is another... 
essay. This is from oh okay sorry. This is continuation from the previous slide yang soalan panjang sangat tadi kan. Hmm. Ada banyak lagi yang kita tak jawab ni. Okay so there are more. There is actually three more that you have to answer from the previous question. So here you have to explain why P is the only product. Candidates, please remember when the question asks you about product. Okay, whether it is they they give the word major product or the only product. For example, this question you have to remember. In order for you to get the two marks in explaining why P is the only product, you have to remember to relate it with whatever rules that you know in organic product. So in this case, the rule is Markovnikov rule. So here you have to answer P is the major product because its formation follows Markovnikov rule. There are Seitzev rule, there are Markovnikov rule and a few other rules that we have in learning organic chemistry. But don't worry, in organic chemistry there is not that many rules that you have to memorize as compared to from semester 1 or semester 2. So here you have Markovnikov rule. When you state follows Markovnikov rule, you will straight away get one mark. So another one mark, you have to explain what is Markovnikov rule is all about. So in Markovnikov rule, P form more stable tertiary carbocat ion. So you get the second mark here. And the next question they ask you is, what is the functional group of Q? Okay, candidates. Here, many of you I know will do this mistake. I will explain in a bit. So as you can see here, the functional group for Q is hydroxyl with the word L, not without the word with not without the L. So normally some student or some candidates they will be careless in writing the correct functional group for a compound where they will write instead of hydroxyl like this they will write hydroxy without the l so that is a big no no one marks gone already okay so here this is one common mistake by the candidates and the second one this is also common eli ni pun common hmm. biasa sangat jumpa kalau i mark kalau cikgu mark uh, dia orang punya test apa uh -huh. dia akan jawab macam ni the other functional group for q is alcohol that is wrong alcohol is not functional group remember candidates alcohol is not functional group Alcohol is name of homologous series. So please remember, there are many homologous series and their own respective functional group. And this functional group has its own name. So please memorize, don't forget, don't what we call tetuka-tuka uh, between one another. Okay, so please bear this in mind. Hydroxyl with L, is the functional group. Hydroxy is when your OH become a substituent in the compound. So it will become without L. And then again, remember, alcohol is the homologous series name. Okay. Cikgu mungkin um, nak tanya kepada apa calon-calon STPM dalam talian, apa agaknya common masalah yang selalu berlaku dekat mereka. Okey, boleh boleh Eli? Ha. Okey, a uh, candidates in your organic chemistry. Ha. Okay. What do you feel is your common mistake when you answer organic chemistry? Ah, okay. pilih seorang. Pilih seorang eh. Uh, pilih seorang a uh, Yulok. Uh, what you feel is the what we call the mistake you always do. And what is you know your problem ha. when you face learning organic chemistry or carbon compound? My, I think my problem is when there's too many names and too many structures to know. 
Yes, too many names and too many structures. Okay, thank you, Yung Lok, for thank sharing you. with us your fear. Okay, uh, normally if problem facing by candidates or my student like this, Ali, I can suruh dia orang. Okay, uh, students always write. Okay, you write in a piece of paper or kalau kalau boleh as big as possible that paper. Okay, you tulis nama tu cantik-cantik, okay? For homologous series, alkene, okay? What do you have? What is the functional group for alkene? So, you write side by side, okay? Bila you write this, cantik-cantik, you design lah, you mm -hmm. colour apa semua kan? Yeah. And then, where to put Ellie? I ask them to put at somewhere they will always see. Kat mana kita biasa tengok? Kat kita biasa tengok? Kalau dalam bilik kita tu apa benda yang kita biasa tengok? Uh, dalam bilik kita. Katil. Uh, katil. Okay. Kepala katil. Yes, kepala katil. Candidates, you dry all these important names, the homologous series, the functional group name, you put tanpa dekat kepala katil. Bila nak tidur, tengok dulu, baca, sebut, sebut, sebut. Ah uh, macam tu Ali. Uh. Jadi kita akan cepat ingat satu lagi Eli, cikgu ha. suruh macam ni. Tampal sebelah cermin. Candidate ah. ah. <laughs> sekarang ni anak-anak muda zaman sekarang kan dia orang suka melawak ah. kan. Ah. Tengok cermin je. Betul, tengok cermin lama pula tu. Okey. <laughs> Jadi daripada you all duk tengok cermin je tu, tampal benda ni, benda-benda yang ah. berinformasi sebelah cermin. Sambil-sambil duduk tenyeh mata macam cikgu ni kan, ada tenyeh, -tenyeh mata ni. Okey. Sambil-sambil tenyeh tu tu Tengok, oh, uh. okay. Homologous series for alcohol is the functional name is hydroxyl uh. with L. Okay, uh. jadi sebut sentiasa. So you akan ingat selalu. Betul. Ha, tengok Betul. tempat yang kita akan selalu tengok. Jangan tempat yang kita jarang-jarang tengok. Kat mana? Ah, tak apalah yang tu you all imagine lah sendiri kat mana yang jarang okay. tengok. Betul tak? Kan? Betul cikgu. Okay, seterusnya cikgu. Okay, so next. We're going to look at this, uh, the last part of the question. Mechanism for the formation of Q. Kat sini ada trick tip dia yang cikgu rasa ramai kandidat tak tahu. And here, candidates, my assumption, cikgu rasa lah macam ni when you want to answer mechanism. So as you can see, this formation of Q going through substitution reaction just now nucleophilic substitution reaction. So what how are you going to answer this even though the question asks you to write but candidate please remember even though the question asks you to write the mechanism we don't want you to write sentences no please saya jumpa ini macam ni bila oh. dia orang first time jumpa soalan macam ni dia mengarang Mengarang satu baris. I was like, oh, okay, kesian kat sudah. I nampaknya I kena tukar dia punya mindset. Uh -uh. So, candidates out there, I know you also maybe were like my students. So, candidates, even though they ask you to write for a question on mechanism, you have to do like this. It only involves arrows, intermediate, major products and the final products. So how are you going to tackle this question? So now for the formation of Q through nucleophilic substitution reaction, we know that this is your haloalkane, your tertiary haloalkane. So here you have chlorine as the living group. So what happened, the first step in order for you to get the first mark, you are going to draw an arrow coming out from the bond that will be broken. Okay, you are going to write an arrow coming from your bond here between the carbon and the chlorine. And you have to make sure that bond touching in the middle of the bond. Touching. Okay, not no touching, touching. And then you extrapolate your arrow going over the CL telling the examiner it is the living group and that bond breaks. So when you draw like this, you will get your first mark.
And then, once you have drawn this arrow, you will produce the intermediate. So here, candidates, when you draw the correct structure of your intermediate, you will get another one mark. So here, we call this carbocation. With the positive sign and the correct structure, you get one mark. And moving on, now, once you have the carbocation, this is where your nucleophile will attack your carbocation. So here, you don't have to write the uh, nucleophile attack the carbocation. Eli, tak payah tulis macam tu. You use arrow again. You use the arrow, so the arrow from your water. Now, your nucleophile is the water. H2O, so now what happened? Again, draw the arrow coming out from your nucleophile goes into the positive sign of your carbocation. You get another one mark. And then next, you will have the correct structure of the intermediate. You get another one mark. Again here, in order to produce the final product, which is Q, you have to release a proton or H+. So when you write minus H+, you get another one mark. And of course, do not forget to draw the final product, which is Q. You might be asking, teacher, where is the one mark for the structure of Q? Remember, candidate, earlier on, you already have one mark for the structure of Q. So you no longer will be given any marks here. Okay, hmm, uh, so okay. this is on mechanism. Alright, Cikgu, kita yes. nak rehat sekejap. Oh, okay. Uh, kita bagi lagi, kita punya cajar STPM sedang menonton sekarang ni uh, serap ataupun digest segala ilmu-ilmu yes. yang dapat pada hari ini. Jadi kita kembali di Road to Success STPM 2020. Didik TV KPM Didik TV KPM Kembali di Road to Success STPM 2020 bersama saya Eli Arifin. Ah tadi tu kita dah tengok antara skop pekerjaan kalau kita belajar chemistry ni. Penyelidik jantina ayam pun salah satu skop pekerjaan ni cikgu eh. Hmm, banyak sekarang kan kerja-kerja pun pelik-pelik sekarang. Betul. Dan masih lagi bersama dengan cikgu Irni dan um, calon-calon STPM dari sekolah menengah kebangsaan Seri Sentosa juga Pudu Jaya Kuala Lumpur yang talian. Dan kita nak teruskan pembelajaran kita, Cikgu. Okey, Ali. Thank you. Okey. Okey, candidates. Let's move on to the next slide. And this is another question from 2013. Candidates, I know there are a lot of words here. Again, remember, when you come across this type of question in paper 3, it is very common. So please make sure you underline as what I did. Here, I underline I highlight with black ink. Okay, konon -konon, eh? black ink. So here, as you can see, even though there are a lot of words here, please, candidate, remember, these words are meaningful words. So you have to underline. Now, I want you to pay attention to the question. Deduce the structural formulae of P, Q, R, and S. Deduce, the word is deduce. How many marks? Nine marks. So, candidates, when the question asks you to deduce, Ali, mm. this is where candidates sentiasa tak dapat nine mark full. Oh. Sebab apa? They answer just only by drawing the structural formulae. Kalau you draw the structural formulae, you only get four marks. The total mark is nine. So, where can you get the other five marks? This is how. Candidates, all the words given to you, like I say, are meaningful words. They give you hints on how to get the other five marks. So here it is. I take out okay, all the important points given in the question just now. These are given. Both P and Q are optically active from the question. So candidates, you have to explain here. What does it mean when both P and Q are optically active? 
you have to write P and Q contain chiral carbon. So when you write like this, meaning that you explain optically active just now, so you will get one mark. And next, Q give off white fume. So you have to explain Q is an alcohol. You get another one mark. Next, Q reacts with hot potassium manganate 7 solution, acidified. So here, again, you explain Q undergoes oxidation or Q is oxidized. You get another one mark. Next, Q gives yellow precipitate, showing the formation of idoform. When you write like that and you explain, meaning that Q contains this structure, what we call as methyl alcohol structure, which is the carbon bonded to CH3, bonded to hydrogen and bonded to OH. So that's why it gives the yellow precipitate. Again, you will get one mark. Last but not least, another statement in the question, R reacts with sodium carbonate. So you explain, R is a carboxylic acid. You get another one mark. So here, to explain your Ellie, mm -hmm. candidates can get five marks. So tak kesayang kalau you just only draw the structures. If you explain, you will get another five marks and you draw, you synthesize what are the correct structure for P, Q, R and S, you will get the addition four marks. So here easily you can get nine marks. Okay, moving on. Okay. This is another essay question. This is from 2019. Oh, last year, eh? question from last year or last two years. Baru Sebab ni. 2020 ah, tak ada lagi kan? Ah, <laughs> yes. Cikgu pun dah lupa. Okay, so here you were given two compounds which are alcohols, methanol and compound Q. The structural formula of compound Q is given. The question is, write a synthetic pathway to show compound Q can be prepared from phenol. Underline, okay? Q, you underline, candidates, please. So now, you have to show synthetic pathway. What does it mean? Candidates, this is also common mistake done by candidates, Ellie. Biasanya, bila dia jumpa soalan synthetic pathway, mm -hmm. common mistake candidate buat, dia akan write the equation. When you write the equation, that is not according to the requirement of the question. Dah salah. And then, bila dia buat synthetic pathway ni pula, panjang lebar. Candidate, please. Synthetic pathway, Cikgu analyze there is a structure for you to answer synthetic pathway question. Apa cara dia? We will see in the next slide. Okay, the total marks here are eight. So how are you going to get the marks? Ah, uh, we look at this. From my analysis, in when the question is on synthetic pathway, you have to write like this. You write the important reagents and the condition and once the reagent and condition are met, what are the intermediate major products? Eli, kat sini, common mistake. Candidates, when they answer, dahlah satu dia buat macam chemical equation. Hmm. And then, dia akan letak lagi, uh, apart from the intermediate major product, they will put the side product. No, you don't need the side products here, candidates. We only focus on the intermediate major product that will produce the final compound, the final product that we require for you to write in the question. So as you can see here, when you write the correct reagent and condition, there are one, two, three, four correct reagent and condition, you will get four marks. Each correct reagent and condition, you will get one mark. And then, when you write the correct intermediate major product, 
without the side product. Eh? Remember, candidate, without the side product. So you will get one, two, three, three marks. So here already, okay, without coming to the final product, you already get seven marks. And of course, since we do not know, okay, since we do not know the structural formula of the product just now, when you draw the correct structural formula of the product, you will get the mark for the correct final product. So all here, you will get seven marks. So let us look at the sample answer. Okay, candidates, this is your answer, sample answer, eh? sample answer. So as you can see here, remember, the question gives you, you have to form compound Q from the phenol. So you have to start with phenol. You have to draw the correct structure of phenol, okay? So next, when you want to come to the final product, you have to use the correct reagents and condition. Do not forget, reagent and the suitable condition. So when you write the correct reagent and condition, for example here, the first one, okay, you have this is alkylation, Friedel-Craft alkylation. So you will have one mark here. Okay, do not forget the ALCA3. If you forget this one, you will get zero mark. Like I said, correct condition. And you have the intermediate major product here. So when you write the correct structure of your intermediate major product, so you will get one mark. Again, candidate, as you can see here, there is no side product. When you write the side product, you are only wasting your precious time. So, and then next, we will have the second reagent and condition, the second correct intermediate, uh, intermediate major product. You have one mark, you have one mark, okay? And then you have another reagent to convert your intermediate major product here, which is uh, sodium hydroxide solution. So you will get this compound, this intermediate. And then last, last is your reagent, which is H+, so you get the final product. As you can see, the marks allocated there, so you know this is the correct answer. Candidates, I want, to, I want you to look at this, okay? From all these, I want you to focus here, okay? As you can see, for this structure, okay, we know that your O is negative. Your Na here is positively charged. So either there are two ways how you're going to write this. The correct ways are either two of these without the charges or both of it with charges. But don't forget, here, the charge for your O is negative one. Eh? It's only negative, not too negative. Don't forget. So here, if you want to write the charge, both have to be there. Or if you don't want to write the charge, both are not there. If you write one, uh, I like positive. So you write an A plus, O without the charge. Wrong. Here, also wrong. Okay? Candidates, this is my last slide for our sharing session today. Ah, hmm. kita mengam-ngamlah cikgu. Ngam-ngam eh. Okay, cikgu boleh beri pesanan terakhir kepada calon-calon STPM yang sedang menonton sekarang ni cikgu. Okay, pesanan terakhir. Dalam berapa minit rasa tu? Ah, uh, seringkas se yang boleh lah. Seringkas. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, to all candidates out there, I know you are now facing the last fight in your STPM chapter of your life. So, please do the best. All of you are like a chunk of coal. You can become the diamond of the first water with hard work, work smart, and also by dreaming big. All right. Do not forget, okay? Best of luck.
Thank you. InsyaAllah. Dan juga terima kasih banyak-banyak kepada Cikgu Irni serta uh, calon-calon STPM yang berada dalam talian uh, daripada Sekolah Menengah Kebuasaan Seri Setosa dan juga Pudu Jaya. Terima kasih banyak-banyak. Dan kepada uh, calon-calon STPM yang sedang menonton sekarang ini, harapnya segala ilmu yang dikongsikan kepada anda dapat memberi manfaat uh, ataupun jadikan tips untuk menjawab kertas perpisahan kemistri nanti. Jangan ke mana-mana sebab selepas ini kita akan bersama dengan Yang Lisha untuk subjek bahasa Cina. Teruskan menonton Road to Success STPM 2020. Sehingga jumpa lagi. Assalamualaikum. Bye. Semua lambai-lambai. Bye everyone. <laughs>